Hey y'all, welcome to uh, the benefits of leveraging a Jamf MSP for your organization's Apple management, a title so long that I promise I will never say it ever again, uh, except for in the live uh, performance of this conversation, which I'm so looking forward to. You can see on the screen a little bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, there is also going to be an element of Surprise Isaac, uh, which is a game we play wherein I surprise Isaac with questions that he has never heard me ask him before um, and put him on the spot. So. That's going to be fun too. Um, we really appreciate you joining us today. There are so many fantastic sessions at JMEC, so uh, consider us flattered. Um, my name is Amy O'Connor. I've been at JAMP for almost four years. I started out on our customer success team, so really learning our product and our customers um, and kind of falling in love with JAMP. Uh, next up, I was working on our partner marketing team, which was uh, a big leap and a lot of fun. I got to focus on managed service providers. So um, while I now serve as our internal communication manager at Jamf, I um, am forever uh, a fan of MSPs and a, um, an advocate for MSPs. And through that journey, I've had the opportunity to meet um, some really cool folks, and not the least of these is Isaac Ordinez, who heads up technology as the director of technology for Man Consulting, um, one of our MSP partners. So welcome, Isaac. I'm really happy to be having this conversation with you. I would love for you to give us the classic kickoff of who you are, um, why you're here, and just a little bit about what led you to becoming a GMP MSP. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Um, I also have decided I'm going to play a game called Answer Questions Differently Than We Practiced, <laughs> just to throw you off. Um, <laughs> fair. More so, than fair. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, my journey to become an MSP, um, I'm out of uh, San Francisco. Um, Man Consulting is a consulting firm that uh, we manage a large number of uh, jam instances for customers for anything from um, startups to uh, larger enterprise um, uh, and, and kind of everywhere in between. We have some Jamf instances that have three computers in them. <laughs> we have some that have thousands. Um, uh, my journey um, started in the 90s uh, managing um, Apple devices and using Macintosh Manager. Um, and since then, it's it's grown. Um, we've I've, I went through a phase of building my own MDMs in, in a sense on a thumb drive to uh, becoming a Jamf integrator. Um, and right now we're, we're working hard on kind of scaling um, across multiple Jamf instances and, and templates there. So I'm really, really into the way that MDM interacts with both the computer and the employee using it and making that easy for everybody involved. Yeah. I appreciate it. You touched on a couple of things. One being just um, the versatility that managed service providers are capable of, right? Um, mm -hmm. Man is a, a great example of what we try to cultivate at Jamf, and that's folks that are meeting customers where they're at um, and providing solutions that make sense for them um, as, they're, as they're scaling or, to your point, some are three um, laptops and there's nothing wrong with that. That's uh, still a value add for the customer, right? Not everything has to explode. So I appreciate you bringing that up right away. Um, something that if we're zooming even further out from your experience, um, I would be interested to know if you're an MSP starting out right now and maybe you have a Microsoft focus or maybe you're truly just starting out, like what does that look like? Um, to want to bring in that Apple focus, like what would you, if you could go back, what do you wish you would have known when you were starting out and really to your point, kind of building MDM on your own. <laughs> so starting out with Jamf, um, anything you would change, any kind of uh, pieces that you would add, you know, suggest other MSPs look out for as they get started? Yeah, I think for when we were just starting out, we had, you know, documents created on where to click in the Jamf UI and all of these places to go. Um, and we kept finding out that no matter who does it over and over again, they're going to make typos and it's tedious work. Um, uh, getting, getting the API going and working for you um, sooner is 
kind of save you a ton of time on the backside. Um, we've uh, we built out templates um, for each workflow, and we built out the ability to upload them through the API. Um, the RESTful API is easy to use and um, does not take a lot of programming skills. Uh, most of the stuff that we have for manipulating the API is just bash scripting. Um, so definitely, I would say you know focus on on what you're going to do to replicate each setup over and over again, um, as opposed to trying to do these these steps manually. Like once you're at five instances, um, it's easy, but you get to fifty. <laughs> you're going to have a, a very difficult time making changes. Yeah, great point. There is that, there's a tipping point, right? Wherein it's yeah. no longer scalable for you as an MSP to, to be carrying out in that way. So yeah, the API and that repetition piece, repeatable processes that don't necessarily require a human touch. Um, can you give an example of, you don't have to name names, but a customer where you um, kind of utilize the API and you solved a problem for them that um, that they needed solved? Um, utilizing the API. Um, you know, there was there was some instances where we have leveraged the API to, um, to uh, programmatically push software updates to customers um, using Apple's new um, MDM approval method. Um, we have other instances where we'll uh, We'll act actively use the API for customers to unmanage devices, so that nice. they, devices that aren't checking in don't cloud up the the patching overview. Um, so we'll go in periodically and find old devices, unmanage them, but still keep the inventory record for them. Nice. Um, coming from that CS background in uh, Jamworld, I can tell you that those conversations about unmanaging devices uh, came up a lot because to your point, you're kind of gumming up the works with these um, pieces that you don't actually need to review. And so something that's deceptively simple like that, um, that you've mm -hmm. created actually cures a whole manner of ills and really allows um, folks it, it, that are in the front lines to be able to, to be more strategic and to be a little bit more focused on on day-to-day uh, -day stuff because we all know how things explode day-to-day -day, depending on <laughs> what's going on in the world, uh, whether you're in education or commercial, like there's, there's kind of always something going on, right? Yeah, it really helps when the CISO is coming up and asking why Chrome is only you know, 45% patched and you make one quick change and Chrome is 85% patched. <laughs> At least that, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. That's really cool. I, I know, I think we we talk a lot in the tech community about this shift to remote work. Of course, it's very top of mind at Jamf because a lot of what we do empowers this type of work. But I know that you saw, um, you know, you saw that quick quick shift and the change. And I would just love to hear from you more about um, what you've seen develop out of that and uh, and how it's maybe changed your approach or changed your business in ways that um, that you've figured out over the past couple of years. Yeah, um, you know, March March of twenty twenty was an immediate shift. I mean, both for everybody personally and you know business. Um, we found that the people who already had people being in uh, companies um, that already had MDM in place were were really in a good spot to pivot. Um, so a lot of our customers that already had management of devices and Apple business manager set up, um, they were able to shift to this remote kind of drop ship method um, a lot quicker. Um, other companies had a little bit of a ramp up time that they had to deal with. Um, uh, it kind of changed what we were installing on the computers too. Um, you know, previously you kind of had this network perimeter, this, you know, fortress that people were in the office and you expected them to be connecting to the internet in a certain way. Um, now all of a sudden everyone's at home and you have an increase in um, security products being installed, um, trying to secure the devices uh, from accessing websites or you know, being used by children who need to do homework. Um, that was a major focus um, and we really streamlined our zero touch deployment as well um, with that because 
giving somebody a laptop sealed in a box became much more important. IT didn't sit with new hires and onboard them and set up their email and go through all these steps. Yeah, I mean, brilliantly put. And the fact of the matter is, it feels like we went from, there are plenty of examples of us going from onboarding and security being place-based to all of a sudden it's like, everyone is everywhere. <laughs> so what then? Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, as a managed service provider, um, the ways that you're seeing security um, focus affect the way that you're you're looking at things, the way that you're approaching things. Um, something that's unique about MSPs is sort of that stack that you create for yourselves mm -hmm. of um, the softwares yeah. that you trust. So we'd love to just hear about um, more specifically how you've been uh, tackling that security aspect of that. Yeah, so what we've we've done is, is started to stack on various security components um, into our offerings because we have a lot of high trust uh, customers that have either DOD requirements or HIPAA or PCI. Um, and so trying to meet all of these and cross-sect them is um, something key. We've, like for example, we built out automations for uh, all of the CIS benchmarks and allow our customers to pick and choose what they want to meet and then we'll remediate and report for them. Um, we've, we've really focused on uh, Mac and Apple first solutions, uh, Jam Protect has been really, really key in that. Um, it's it's made troubleshooting when endpoint security is uh, <laughs> detrimental to the employee's uh, productivity um, become less of an issue. Um, and we've been exploring new products. Red Canary has been a really neat add-on for actually managing the response to these alerts and these events um you know as an msp we we don't have somebody hired to sit and watch incoming log events in a red team and you know something an enterprise would have um so being able to provide that kind of experience to smaller companies has been, been a, it's been a good focus for us yeah that's awesome i'm glad you brought up red canary we love red canary and i think um again one of the things that as I became more versed in managed service providers over the past year and a half mm -hmm. or so, um, what I found so fascinating was this idea that not everyone has to wave the Jamf flag necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can tell your uh, customers with confidence uh, that you're taking care of their security needs. And in the background, it's something layered over something else that works for you as a business. And I just, there's just so much variety in that. There's so much, um, can get so specific and you can be so much more prescriptive um, with your customers um, based on layering those technologies. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a big takeaway for sure. Um, so, you know, you obviously use uh, Jamf as your, your Apple enterprise uh, management solution. And uh, that's that's why we're here today in many ways. But there are reasons for that. Um, there are a lot of quantitative and qualitative reasons, I'm sure. But if you were an MSP um, listening to this and you don't have an Apple focus or you do, but you're with another uh, vendor, this isn't like a shameless Jamf plug. This is just real talk. Why Jamf? Like what difference does it make, right? Yeah, um, you know, there's a number of reasons why we've chose why we chose Jamf. Um, I, I've been an MSP since before there was an MSP program. <laughs> um, we yeah. have paved the way for this. Um, <laughs> I have fought many battles and <laughs> came out bruised to to get the uh, the services we have now for MSPs. Um, but uh, you know, the API I think has been a, has been a huge. Uh, 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 draw for us. Um, we found that other solutions don't quite have it. Um, the ability to scale and the ability to um, template some of these things. Um, another reason is a, a lot of our customers are, while they start off small, they are going to accelerate and grow into 500 seed organizations that may have an IT department at some point. Um, and one of the things that I kind of enjoy is when I uh, transfer their Jamf instance back to them. Um, to their IT department and 
wave goodbye and come back for fun, special projects. Um, yeah. it's, I think it's really good to, to give them something that they're going to continue using, even if you're not in the picture, um, not something that's trying to just bend or lock them or be simple. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up. I have to go back for a second to just point out that, yeah. um, our partners have helped us build this program and there is no doubt about that. So any of y'all that are listening and can agree with Isaac, like we recognize you, we appreciate you. There's been a lot of progress, um, in, in the managed service provider element of Jamf, um, even since I started a year and a half ago, and the team has never been stronger, um, more more uh, laser focused, um, and more interested in, in feedback. So if you are looking for the right person to provide feedback to about the MSP program, that can be me because I will get you to the right people. Um, but I just, I don't want to diminish that. I know it's, it feels like a like, ha ha ha, you, you complained so much, but it isn't that there's really been a collaborative effort to, um, yeah. from a jam perspective, create a community and a feedback loop where we're actually building out a program that serves y'all better. So I appreciate you raising that. Yeah. Yeah. The jam um, team has been yeah, amazing in helping. Oh, I'm this. so glad. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, we're really, we're excited about it. And I don't think we've ever been uh, better poised or better focused to, uh, to provide what uh, managed service providers specifically need, because um, we know it's different than, than the average customer, or the average partner. So um, yeah, the other piece that you touched on is just that scaling piece and the joy of giving someone their instance back like <laughs> i don't know what it reminds me of but it's very um <laughs> you know it's very archetypal you know where you're sort of like and here now this is yours and you can do this it's free because i built this home <laughs> for you <laughs> the releasing of the doves exactly. right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah Fly there's home. a little bit of right <laughs> you can always circle back i'm here for you um but there is that that element of again, coming back to just how focused you can be on being specifically what your customer needs, um, including being the IT desk or being the special projects um, individual, the, the, the group that brings them from one environment to the next. Like there's just, there's a lot you can do through um, your services that it's really fun to see those success stories and hear about um, how you're able to really, yeah, <laughs> release doves, let them fly and uh, know that your expertise has helped them along their way. So appreciate you sharing that. I like creepily took notes, as you can tell in this, these slides of things that you've said in the past. So this is one of them. But this idea of the flexibility you talked about, right, the API, um, and it's it's a mature API. It's something that we continue to invest in at Jamf, and we continue to um, again listen to managed service providers, listen to other customers and partners, and better understand like how do we grow this as um, as the capacity of API in general continues to grow, right? So I'm glad that it's serving y'all well, and it's fun to hear about those success stories. You know, to flip the previous question on its head. Um, why, if I am looking for um, an, an MSP, like I want to partner with an MSP, I am opening a small shop um, and I'm going to have six employees and get them all iPhones and I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> what am I looking for in an MSP? And I know um, you don't have a sales bone in your body, so this is not an, a man pitch, um, but tell me, what I should be looking for from a really zoomed out perspective, um, what what do I need? Um, I definitely would say focusing on an, an MSP that is going to provide you more than just licensing um, is is typically something that I would I would be looking for. Like some value add, do they have uh, do they have workflows? Do they have um, a system already set up to secure your devices and and kind of a, a plan on how to use Jamf? Um, that is that is key. Different people have different, or different organizations will have different uh, different needs. We have some customers that we are their IT department. We have others that have a Jamf senior admin, and they want us to kind of handle their low hanging fruit, like patching Chrome. I mean, that's something that 
everyone has done and everyone needs to do. So why is it so unique that everybody needs to do it themselves in their own way? Um, we also have some customers where um, they have a help desk, but they, they don't have that senior Jan support. And so they just need somebody to handle that area. Um, so I de definitely find your, what, what your need is and have the MSP fit that need from a technical perspective as well as a licensing. Yeah, no, that really hits home. And I think it reminds me of just kind of career coaching or other mentorship style conversations of like finding your why, like know what you're going <laughs> for before you head out there, right? Because it's very easy to um, get derailed or confused or sold right? But if you know what you actually yeah. need from the provider um, and you know what solutions you're looking for, um, you're definitely going to be better suited. So brilliantly put and again, um, can be so prescriptive because those are two very different examples of the ways that which you could engage, right? With customers. So thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, automation is the key to scale. If you, if you all haven't gotten it yet, <laughs> it's, it's the yeah. API. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're being, you know, maybe needlessly redundant, but it's important. Um, and uh, I, I didn't stalk you, stalk you down for quotes for nothing. Um, we'll, we'll let those <laughs> ring out. But I think, you know, of course, I'm very, I'm very biased. I love Jamf. I love working at Jamf. I love the culture of Jamf. I love the communities that we're able to build, whether it's Jamf Nation, the MSP community, our reseller community. Um, it, it's beyond our Jamf four walls, global four walls, as it were. But I'd love to hear from you. Um, how does that affect your business? How does that affect the way you approach things? Um, what is that? Jamf difference. Um, certainly, we you know it's the API, but what are what are those other elements that are kind of make Jamf unique and something that you're sticking with year after year? Um, it, it's it's just this whole group of elements that kind of creates like a cohesive, not just a product, but also uh, a, both a community. Um, like the training, I love the fact that the training is hard enough that people sometimes don't pass. Um, I've been in training classes where. You didn't, you didn't understand the course material. Um, you don't get the certification. Um, whereas I've come across the opposite, where if you take the class, you get the certification. There's no real bar for entry. Um, so between the training um, and the in-person classes, Champ Nation, um, you know, all of the people in the community that are discussing and sharing what they're doing with Champ, um, and then bringing it full circle to JNUC, um, where uh, there's going to be a lot of good conversations um, over cocktails about what we've designed. Uh, <laughs> those are I mean, my, honestly, those are the there's the <laughs> <laughs> our um, our very friendly and ex expert um, producer of this segment is going to be very disappointed that I went to this slide so quickly, but. <laughs> Isaac, being someone who can think on his feet, turned it into a comment about cocktails, which is fair. Um, going back to the community piece, I really think like it's unlike some GM customers are like this, right? Like they'll they'll yeah. share ideas and they'll share um, kind of what they're up to, and I've always thought that was like very very cool. Connecting customers that had similar problems and having them work it out in ways that I could not advise was super fun. In, in customer success. With MSP, what is fascinating about it to me is that y'all are out there for the same market share for all intents and purposes, and you're looking for customers that you can um, really do great things for and be very specific with, but you're willing to share those workflows and these aha moments. Um, do you have experience in that? And and also, I mean, Jamf Nation, of course, but I know, um, yeah. Mac admin Slack can be an amazing place to to find more intel and, and kind of mine out some answers. Yeah, there's a Jamf MSP channel. Some of some of the Jamfs are lurking in there, especially on the MSP team. Um, there's a uh, Jmug um, <laughs> group of people that yeah. <laughs> um, there's a there's a group of people that uh, meet on Zoom and presentations are shown from third party vendors about 
software or solutions that we'll integrate in and people to kind of overall discuss issues they've run into and, and solutions for them. So that's, that's been great. I think Yeah. So there's a large community and it's not just Jamf Nation. It's, it's Mac admins. It's, it keeps going out. <laughs> yeah. There's something, um, having a kind of varied career background and one of which involved building an actual building, there's something about people that are building something where it's like, hey, look what I found out. Look what I figured yeah. out. And there's just that energy um, in the Jamf MSP world that I think is super unique and awesome. And certainly you are helping to lead the charge there. But um, I'm just so glad we got to have this conversation and kind of unearth some of the reasons why you've been such a strong jam partner for so long. Um, and also some of the things that not only managed service providers could be looking for from Jamf, but that customers might be looking for um, from a managed service provider. So a um, couple different lenses, and I think you did a great job just explaining more of that to us. So I really appreciate that. The Coming back to cocktails, as one does, um, if y'all are going to be at the the actual in-person JNUC, or if you happen to see people that look somewhat like this um, out in the world, maybe just buy them a white wine or a beer because it might be me or Isaac. Uh, but in all actuality, find us on the internet, connect with us in real life. Uh, if and when possible. And just again, so appreciative of your time and your investment in listening to what Isaac and I um, had to say today. So thank you for your time. Um, thank you, Isaac. Big cheers all around and uh, happy JNAC, y'all. Thank you, everybody.